uh, Utkir, he works with me. He's the guy who built uh, uh, Etherspot Bundler, and he's been working uh, with me on the P2P interface. So uh, yeah, uh, take it away, Utkir. We can show us, uh, show them the demo of what we have built till now, and uh, later on, I'll uh, probably let you know what uh, uh, what are the future tasks and what we have at the moment. Hey Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen then. So yeah, I hope it's visible. Um, yeah, this is the latest stable release of Scanda. Um, here I'm running it. Yeah, it takes some time. Yeah, it says uh, there's no boot DNRs because we haven't deployed any, but uh, this node itself can serve, can be a boot node for other nodes. So let's run another node on a different port. And pass uh, first, first nodes in us. So yeah, um, it pinged the first node, and after 15 seconds, they should exchange their metadata and recognize that the client is is scanned. Yeah, here. And yeah, we can run a third node. Yeah, here the second node uh, found out about the third node too. So, yeah, that's all. That's all. Right, right now, right now, only pinging rather? Yeah, pinging and, and exchanging metadata. Oh, okay. Um, Utke, do you want to uh, probably copy over the ENR record and demonstrate what? Data is stored there right now because we'd have to come back to that. Anyway. Yeah, right now it looks like this. So this is the inner data we've uh, stored right now, but based on our uh, implementation, we've already discovered a couple of teething issues which requires a slight uh, change to the spec, which I'll be updating uh, uh, going forward. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, we, I'm just waiting for us to complete uh, uh, the complete testing of probably other things before I uh, release a new version, um, a submitted new version or new PR for uh, the spec. Uh, the ENR is slightly different from what uh, is, uh, sub, I mean, uh, available in consensus uh, spec. As a result of which, we are not able to use the uh, the uh, tooling that is available in uh, for ETH2 uh, nodes. I did uh, ping um, uh, Proto Lambda a bit uh, earlier this week, but I haven't got a response from him. So I was asking Shaha or anyone of you if you can uh, introduce me to him. Probably uh, then I can pick his brain to understand what would be the best forward for a few of what the is then? times. Sorry, uh, I didn't catch that draw. What is the signature? What it signed and who signs it? Uh, the sign, uh, every time you start a node, a, a key is generated automatically and which is used uh, to sign messages uh, that, uh, that's used for propagation. 
So this is the signature of this server of the of the other server of the node. Yeah, of the node. Of which one? The boot node. Uh, this one, I believe, was for the boot node. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we have at the moment. Uh, the next uh, step was uh, to address these teething issues we've had uh, with the ENR uh, boot node record, uh, and then progressing with Utkir had commenced work on the uh, gossip sub uh, today. Uh, we'd continue working on that and then slowly move on to request response as well. So yeah, Utkir, you can uh, unshare, uh, unless you, uh, any of you have any questions on any, uh, the thing that we have at the moment. Mm, no, it's OK. Great to have a very progress and see. We'll look at it and maybe, I don't want to copy, but yes, we will. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. The, the code. yeah, we specifically don't want to look at the code itself because you are also writing in TypeScript, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so we want to implement uh, our own peer-to-peer uh, -peer protocol uh, and implement implementation of the protocol. And that's exactly what we wanted to talk about uh, with uh, the other uh, bundle developers. So to see that this is something that we want to do within the coming like, two or three weeks to actually get something working and also have some testing for it for all the bundlers. And we wanted to see like where, where you stand. So I, I'm glad to see that you that you are doing your your part. And uh, then do, did you all did you start working on the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, protocol? Uh, where, where are you currently in terms of the implementation? Yeah, um, just to give you an update on our bundler, we're uh, we just opened up some closed beta to like some some customers we're offering this as a service for. Um, we're working through that. We're kind of prioritizing um, trying to get people to to use our endpoints over going through and and getting a, the the bundler ready for for open source. Um, so we're trying to do we're trying to get some people using it. We're trying to open source it, and then um, we'll be ready to do some of the P two P stuff. Um, obviously, we've got a lot going on over here. So um, my thoughts on P two P. Well, my thoughts on open sourcing and P2, like we'll open source and then we'll P2, start the P2P stuff likely about a month from now um, is our timeline there. Um, and that's obviously <laughs> dependent on a lot of different things, but that's our, that's our thoughts. So kind of June, we'd be starting to implement the, the P2P side of things. Okay, great. Um, so hopefully once you start, we will already have something uh, running ourselves so we can maybe, uh, like, I don't know, give you some uh, some examples or uh, just get at least getting ready with the tests and everything. So so uh, it will be easier for you to, to also do it. Yeah, though, do you want to add something? Uh, two things. One of them, I'm not sure whether we want to have at least a, a, a test for a, a dual bundlers, or a, do we want to rewrite the uh, P2P in, uh, in the test in uh, Python, so that would be, the test would be a single bundler against the test? I'm not sure which is easier. But what do you mean by a single bundler? Single bundler means right now we're checking a one bundler at a time. We're checking the behavior for bundle. We don't check interaction between two bundles. Uh, the P2P, yeah, because we, there isn't any. yes, because there isn't any. Uh, once we add the, uh, we have the P2P that we said it already. We have two ways to test it. One is create a test that doesn't know anything about the P2P, but uh, start two bundlers with their configuration, perform operation with the first, and want to see uh, how it reflects on the other which automatically they we should synchronize with themselves. If you start two bundlers of the same, and then the test can be used for development with two same bundlers. And, uh, and yeah, the real- that's what I thought initially. Testing each two different bundlers to make sure that they work. So uh, it's running more of the test. And, and, and this way, the, the test suite is agnostic to the actual implementation. It doesn't know anything about the implementation, except that it brings up two bundlers and tells them to talk to each other. Yeah, that, that's what initially I thought we were going to do. So I assume that at least uh, at least the first the initial uh, testing would be the, like that, and maybe so, we'll find out something later. Yeah. Okay, so 
uh, so we need to build this test and also an executor. Right now, the executor brings one. We need a, yeah. a, a mempool. A, a, yeah. A duo executor which brings each two. Uh, the other question I wanted to ask you uh, is: that, Did any one of you uh, already try to implement the uh, version zero uh, six of the uh, entry point? Yeah. yeah, because uh, yeah. there isn't much change because uh, uh, the reference bundler high up. The reference bundler didn't uh, yeah. almost uh, nothing to support it, but because we, for example, the hash. We use the view function, which is inefficient, I know, but at least uh, it's easier for uh, the bundler in terms of code. If you try yeah. to do it more you need uh, to do so. I believe we've already integrated that in Skanda. Uh, Utkir observed a couple of issues uh, where a couple of tests were failing, I believe. Around 10 tests were failing, if I'm uh, correct. I think that was to do with the data uh, uh, not being yeah. changed. Uh, Utkir, uh, can you correct me if I'm wrong? So, so yeah. the non uh, the non sending uh, now was introduced into the entry point. So it might be something that you, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe you just provided a mock nonce in the test that initially didn't matter and now it does. Mm -hmm. For example, some of our tests initially failed on that. So if you fix the nonce itself, it may just uh, uh, just fix all the tests as well. Yes, it, right. was, it was. There is a. There is a nonce in the account, and there is a way of the test to build it. The tests previously didn't check the nonce, and so we could send the same user operation over again with the same nonce. It was a simpler test. But now right. that the nonce is checked by the entry point, uh, there is no no changing nonce. So we did change the account. Something mm -hmm. we did, uh, we, the, the account doesn't handle nonce. It didn't before, but now it is handling the entry point. So we didn't change the test to use a separate nonce. A different nonce. Uh, one test we actively read it from uh, the account. The other test we simply use uh, different keys, which makes it like running in parallel. Right. Okay. One test we didn't add, and um, maybe should add, we should add it in the future. Is a uh, supporting uh, sequential nonces. Like mm -hmm. now that the nonces can be validated, I think we talked with uh, Dan in the past. Uh, the bundler can check the nonces and validate separate user operations uh, against the system. Uh, it's different uh, nonces. Uh, uh, though, okay, it is a bit harder to test uh, because uh, if you do a simulation, it will fail. If mm -hmm. you have nonces. One and two, the two nonce will fail because it needs uh, the one to be executed. So either you need to simulate both, something right. our simulation doesn't support, or you need to push a state. It is possible. Uh, we need to think how to test it. Uh, it is possible to, when you do the trace call to push state into the uh, entry point to say, OK, I'm pushing. I know exactly what storage cell the nonces are kept, so I will push the state and I will check that uh, this is operation and uh, succeed. We don't have this test yet. Right now it's the same okay. old mechanism. Okay, so, right. we're, so soon we'll push uh, the uh, version 6 into the main branch, so all bundlers that don't support it uh, will fail. So, uh... Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, the yeah. last... Uh, Sorry, go on. Ignoring uh, who joined us uh, after a very long... Uh, Oh, you. So uh, we, uh, I mean, uh, you missed the uh, demo of uh, the P2P interface that we already have in place. Uh, maybe uh, Utkir can uh, demonstrate that again uh, for your benefit. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I apologize for being late. I actually mm -hmm. didn't. I'm I'm not in sync with my calendar yet. I just got back, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't nice want moment. to waste your time on having to do a, a to demo twice. That's fine then. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll be sharing this uh, video anyway uh, why, because it's being recorded. You can. Uh, so uh, there, there were a couple of questions I had on that front. Firstly, uh, draw to um, ask you. I think the last time we discussed, we were you also considering Hive as an exam uh, as a means to test uh, different network. I, I think um, Stokes suggested that as well. Uh, I haven't looked at it in detail yet, uh, but uh, again, what I didn't follow. Hive, Hive. Uh, that was uh, ah, using Hive, using Hive. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I need to uh, spend some more time looking into it to see if uh, we can fork uh, the ETH2 uh, hype tests uh, to see if it can work with bundles. If it does, maybe that's another means to test it. Uh, but uh, that comes back to, uh, as I was raising with Shahaf uh, uh, day before yesterday, if we can have an intro uh, to Proto Lambda, uh, because he did most of the uh, tooling for consensus clients, it'll ha help to pick his brain to understand how we go about setting up this infrastructure and set up. Uh, I, I have, uh, I mean, uh, he did publish uh, uh, ETH2 boot nodes uh, thing, but that doesn't seem to recognize our uh, ENR structure because obviously there are slightly, uh, there are some slight changes to the ENR uh, record of uh, uh, bundlers, uh, bundler nodes as such. So we might have to fork that boot node and uh, um, run a new version uh, we plan to run one uh, within the ETH spot infrastructure but uh, others are free to run their own i believe the uh, the ETH, uh, the boot node software can talk to other boot nodes as well and uh, function only as a boot node and not uh, hold the entire um, uh, data as such so that's one uh, thing for us to consider um, why why do you need to uh, fork uh, uh, because the structure is different no, what change in the ENR? Uh, because uh, the uh, ENR in um, consensus clients takes care of uh, attestation subnets uh, and uh, validator subnets and few other things which are not relevant uh, in the case of bundlers. They have uh, others. They also maintain state data like the fork, uh, the last epoch number, and all that, which is part of the metadata. We don't store any such data in. Uh, uh, in our uh, setup, so we cannot follow that as it is. Okay. So yeah, uh, any uh, a soft intro to him. I he did uh, open my message, I believe, on Telegram, but obviously he doesn't know me, so he's not responded. So uh, if right. one of you can introduce can, that, yeah, I, I can, uh, uh, I can talk to him. But um, I didn't quite understand. Uh, so what do, what do we want to, uh, to ask him? Uh, no, just pick his brain to understand if we are going about setting up this in the first place. Uh, firstly, is the ENR structure, whether what we set up, uh, is it compatible or is good enough uh, to work with is the existing tools? Uh, if it isn't, then probably we have to fork that and uh, fork his uh, uh, tools for uh, each two uh, network and uh, tweak it to work with our bundler uh, network. What tools are you talking about? Uh, there's one, uh, I can share the link here. Uh, there's one published under ethereum.org. Uh, let me share that. ETH2 tooling, where he uh, lists quite a uh, set of tools that can be used uh, while setting up the network uh, that has boot node uh, programs and uh, ENR viewer and quite other uh, quite a few other things okay i am looking And do you know? Do you know if he's still? Uh, uh, is he still the maintainer of the tool that uh, of the tool you're talking about? Uh, I don't know. The last, uh, uh, I believe, the last push for that particular tool was probably a couple of years ago. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. So the, I mean, the reason is that you you know that he's not. Uh, so yeah, he's not at the EFA. He's uh, he's now at Optimism. Right. Uh, uh, I can reach out to him. I just don't know if he's still maintaining uh, these tools. Yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, it was interesting that the last time I had some questions around SSZ and I uh, post that in uh, the bundler group, I, I believe Benji uh, or Benji, I don't know the name. He uh, responded to me saying that uh, Proto Lambda suggests that you should follow this link or something. So even though he's not part of the group, I think he was happy to help uh, yeah. on that front. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure we will. So, uh, 
So I will um, I'll reach out to him and uh, connect you. All right, that'll be helpful. Thanks, uh, Yoke. Sure. Uh, so yeah, that that was my question on the P two P side. I believe Shahab, you raised a, a point on uh, one of the RPC endpoints, which I had included in the spec, which probably broke the schema. Uh, there is support for multiple uh, mempools. Yeah, for yeah, exactly for the okay. So that's something that uh, we weren't sure exactly how it needs to be introduced to the uh, to the spec itself or basically to, to the bundlers in terms of both implementations and the spec how we, mm -hmm. how should we approach it how to when what i'm talking about is how to support multiple like multiple mempools in terms of at least how does the bundler uh, report other bundlers that he supports multiple mempools so mm -hmm. uh, because we weren't sure about the specific implementation on how to do it, and the fact that uh, the RPC that you added to the schema actually broke the schema. And so I just decided to temporarily remove it. And we should basically, I think, just talk about it here and see what what we need to do in order to to add other uh, like other mempools to the to the bundle. So okay. I'm not sure that like, because. The RPC call that you added was uh, basically debug RPC call for adding a schema, yeah. Uh, for asking the the bundler about uh, about what mempool it supports. So why why mm -hmm. is, does it need to do it on 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 debug basically? Uh, I thought it was more uh, a debug uh, because uh, uh, I mean uh, from an, a maintenance perspective, the maintainers of a bundler can detect uh, a given RPC endpoint supports uh, which or uh, set of mempools. So if if it doesn't, you could always uh, add support for a new mempool if required, just for information purpose. Okay, so uh, for information purpose. Okay, so that's something. I, I don't. I, I am not uh, entirely opposed to adding like this kind of an RPC call. And just I, I was just wondering what uh, what the benefit is from that. Like, do you need it for testing? Like, should it be uh, for part testing, of the uh, Yeah, it, it is for testing mostly. But I I uh, I mean I can foresee other use cases that might come through. Uh, yeah, I mean again. Uh, if uh, if an infrastructure company like say Pimlico is running several uh, hosted bundlers and wishes to route a particular uh, user op to a particular uh, hosted instance, then they might use this particular uh, endpoint to detect the list of supported mempools and then route it accordingly. This is just yeah, something but that then I then it should be it should be on production as well, not in debug, right? Not as I see what you mean. Instance. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. I mean, okay, I, I'm I'm fine doing it, but then if if it needs to be in production, then we need to think: does it do, do we need to support to to add another I'm information, trying, trying other to just the yeah? One thing that I don't understand: why a bundler need to know the mempool's other support? Because I need to uh, I broadcast on the mempool, I listen on the mempool, so uh, no. Uh, this is not the P2P side, bro. This is more on the RPC side. Uh, I understand, but why should? Who should try to check whether it is uh, supported? Yes, it could be a debug that you want to, for debugging purposes, to ask it. But I, I don't see where exactly, except in a test that it is configured with one mempool ID, and I test it that it is configured correctly with. Uh, no, where it what, comes uh, can. Can I submit a user op that is uh, to a, a bundler which does not support a given mempool? That gets rejected, right? Um, so before I submit a user op to a given bundler, I need to know the list of mempools that given bundler supports. Uh, when you say, for example, you submit, you, yeah. when you say you submit, who is you? Uh, I meant the end user. So end user doesn't know, know anything about my pool ID. It connects to the RPC, yeah. it connects to Alchemy and send user operations to Alchemy. Yeah. Uh, so it think doesn't think about mempool IDs. So one thing that maybe I'll try to explain what we would have to do in that case, like 
let's say we, we have an alternative mempool that has some sort of separate validation rule um, that lets a particular factory contract through that we've visually approved, we would have to make sure that any user operation that uses that factory goes to a bundler that supports that mempool or else it will get rejected by, by a bundler that doesn't support that mempool. Um, so this, I guess if, if you have some sort of split infrastructure where some of your nodes, some of your bundlers are attached to particular mempools, it might help to have an RPC that lets you, um, lets you determine that. But I don't necessarily think that RPC needs to be part of the spec. Um, cause that could just be something that like we, a, a bundler team would build ourselves. That's not spec, but we would just use it so we can use it internally in our infrastructure. It doesn't necessarily need to be part of and I, and it. Definitely. I don't think should be under, be under like the ETH underscore spec. So, but debug Actually, might make who, sense. Who's expected to call this RPC code. And I think that an end, end user doesn't, uh... No, it wouldn't be the end user. It would for us. Yeah. Be, it would be like our, we have a set of logic, like a set of routing logic that sits in, you know, when you send a request to us, we have a router, that router decides where to send it. And if it routes it, it needs to route it to a, to a particular bundler that understands mm -hmm. this validation rule that it should be running against. So I think, um, I think this, uh, this router, uh, this, uh, this router, would itself be, a, it would run the same code as a bundler. It's just, it doesn't bundle, but it runs the same code because it needs to validate uh, the user operation. So the easiest way to handle it is that uh, this bundler, uh, this this non-bundling uh, bundler that only does RPC, uh, will RPC be, bundling. It will be, yeah, this, uh, so this RPC bundler will be, um, it will be a member of all of them, all of the aggregate of all the mempools you support. And then since uh, the, the way we define the propagation rule, is that uh, you propagate to all you, you propagate to all the mempools where the user operation is valid. So if you are a member, so if this uh, RPC bundler is a member of all of them, it, it's going to propagate it to the correct bundlers and only to these bundlers. Yeah, I, and I, th so, I think uh, I agree that this is this is it's buildable. Like we could, you could even figure out a way to do that with kind of running a bunch of different validations in in parallel. There's a lot of different things you could do in your own infrastructure. Um, all I'm saying is I don't think it, the the actual RPC request to figure out which bundler supports which mempool needs to be spec. It could be something that. Um, yeah, it, it, I think. It, yeah, that, that's it, what I was. Yeah, yeah, user is not the user is not aware of uh, multiple uh, alternate uh, mempools. The user just sends the user operation, and if it matches uh, anything that the bundler supports, it's accepted, and otherwise it's not. So the user shouldn't care about uh, about different mempools. No, that's fine. Uh, but yeah. uh, okay. any... let, let, let me give a concrete example. Uh, uh, if you have an account that uses a uh, WorldCoin, it's a very nice implementation of unique identifier per user, but unfortunately, it is impossible to use this for validation, for pure validation, because it is it uses hashes and it modifies storage based on uh, whatever. So you can verify the proof on the contract, but uh, it cannot be uh, through a normal validation. But I can see a system that will decide that a, a, a world coin is uh, large enough and good enough and infrastructure to support accounts, and we want to whitelist this uh, mechanism. So we have a mempool that accepts world coin requests. Now, applications, if I'm a user and I work, I'm not sure that I, uh, I really care about that. Like, I'm going to go through alchemy. It could be that this uh, specific validation will be more, uh, will cost more because the, they're going to be failure. It is possible to create failures with a uh, world coin. So uh, yes, as uh, Dan said, they might have a group of bundlers that support this. But again, the user enters the system, uh, doesn't know this internal uh, uh, mempool IDs, which might change over time. So it has this entry point, and from there, these RPC calls will route to the right places. Yes, it's true that it is possible that some RPC providers will not support all mempools, and the users will be uh, limited to some of the uh, RPC providers. 
uh, but I still don't feel uh, comfortable with exposing such an internal uh, technicalities to users. No, th that's fair enough then. Uh, I mean, uh, but uh, we need not add it to the spec, but uh, a kind of an advisory of how bundler implementers, should it be under a debug endpoint or uh, the bundler implementers can implement it in under any um, setup that they want, it, uh, not necessarily under ETH, uh, because uh, I'm just trying to, uh, uh, I mean, how do I put it? Uh, probably a standardized way on where such uh, customized uh, endpoints ought to be av available. Because when um, Ethereum first started off, we had diff uh, uh, we had completely different uh, set of endpoints uh, on um, what was that node uh, uh, by Polkadot, uh, the previous name. I forgot the name, uh, which is quite popular. Uh, uh, with uh, get, I, I forgot the name. They had a different set of endpoints, and Get had a standard set of endpoints. So I was just um, saying, should we set a standard of how custom endpoints should be named, or something like that? Did I explain myself correctly? What you said, they said that the informal prefix of all the account abstraction related, but non-standard RPC calls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I, I'm not opposed to have it as, uh, in the spec as optional uh, RPC call. I'm not sure it should be part of the bug, but... Uh, okay. I, I, I'm, again, yeah, but I, I'm not against it. It's just that if, if we do it, then we need to do it like uh, to, to keep it okay. at least constant, uh, uh, consistent. Yeah, optional is, yeah. Making it optional and optional, uh, but uh, standardizing it might make sense. I mean, if... If many bundles yeah. are going to implement it, then at least they should implement it the same way, so we don't have the, yeah. uh, so we don't have this situation you referred to with parity and uh, like with parity yeah. yes, implementing uh, RPC slightly differently, which is Literally. which is a real pain and wasted. Uh, I, I wasted many hours on it myself. So yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, we uh, we all probably at uh, one time <laughs> a few years ago, <laughs> but uh, the the point is that uh, we can do it. I, I, I am yeah. not uh, opposed to adding it. I'm just one potential suggestion would be like an admin underscore node info or something like that. That's like returns yeah. in it and it's not standardized. It's just like underneath an admin namespace. It lets people yeah, administer exactly something that RPC yeah. Geth yeah. Geth has yeah, admin and, node info, and it definitely should be optional. Uh, if the bundle doesn't support it, then. It it's already uh, it's not part of what the user needs anyway, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, we, we can edit. Uh, just we can uh, we can edit uh, if you if you want. You can re-edit and then we'll test the the RPC call and uh, see that the schema is actually yes. yeah. And the only problem now just define the, the name the proper name. <laughs> He's open. So it's not debug because debug is something that enables and disables. It's a bulk, yeah. and it's not E, so... Admin. I so yeah, I... AA. A, but, uh, a, okay. I think, uh, admin, it is, it, is, it is administrative, but maybe calling it admin, would, would, and people would, uh, would misinterpret it as something privileged right. that they should block uh, from users. So it's not privileged, it's... Uh, <laughs> info. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Sounds good. All a, right, info. so... Uh, oh, so Shab, yeah. do you want me to resubmit the PR, uh, changing that to info, maybe? Uh, it was just, I, I didn't revert the whole PR. I just reverted that uh, specific commit out of it because it okay. was, uh, again, it was, it, the, the schema itself wasn't uh, formatted uh, properly. Um, okay. We, we can we can edit. Uh, we can yes, edit please. again. And yeah, just choose a different name. I don't mind. And uh, yeah, I, I can edit even myself if you if you need to. If yeah, you want. Uh, yeah, please, uh, <laughs> please feel that I, I have no issues. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, the other question I had was uh, since you were asking earlier in the call or that uh, we'd have to discuss with other implementers uh, to see how they wish to proceed on the P two P front. Uh, the last conversation I had with John and uh, Hazim that uh, they were ready to begin the P2P side. So should we probably reschedule this call uh, to make probably Hazim, uh, I mean, make it easy for Hazim to join? I believe he's in Australian time zone. I'm not sure whether it's Sydney or Melbourne. 
uh, would that probably help? And then we can get, I, I don't know where uh, candid wall, uh, wallet guys are based. Uh, yes, maybe we can, we can start discussion on the group and at least uh, find the yes. time. Yeah, I mean, we could re uh, uh, rename this particular call as probably implementers call and then uh, decide uh, how, how to proceed. Because it, it yeah. would definitely help if we have more closer coordination when we are building the P2P stuff uh, and uh, we can uh, frequently discuss uh, issues that we face and uh, work out solutions. Yeah. Yes. Right. And yeah, that, that's, that's what we wanted to make progress at least. There. Uh, trying to think about the proper time. Yeah. Uh, should I where, where probably set out? Sorry? Where are you located? I'm in London. Uh, no, for us, it's uh, 8 p.m. Yeah, I believe. Okay, so we can get the. Uh, the call yeah, I don't know what, what time it is in Sydney or Melbourne. I, I, don't, I don't know if there is a time. I think we're on, we're, I think we're on all sides of the globe. Yeah. Oh, it's three forty yeah. right now. In You're Sydney. in California then. I'm in I'm in New York. Ah, in New York. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, it's in the middle of the day for you, right? One, right. Yeah, one forty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. how, how, uh, how, uh, how are you as a morning guy, if it's going to be a... I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it to be a morning uh, thing as well, uh, but it might be too early for Dan. No, I, I'm okay. If, as long as it's... I, I could probably do any time after 6 a.m. It's good for okay. me. I'll just be really tired oh. on the call. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, uh, think... let me ping John and uh, um, Hazim and uh, find out what works for them. But uh, I'll probably also pick the cadet guys to work out. Uh, who else has a bundler? I, I'm, yeah, I'm that, that's hard. what I wanted to ask you. Have you have who's writing the, the Rust bundler? Oh, uh, Vid, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he's actually also passing the test. So I assume that once we introduce uh, memorable tests to the bundler, he will see that he's not up to speed. But I want to ping him before that, right? I don't want to get, uh, I, I don't want to get to a point where, uh, where he only notices it once we are pretty much done with it. So oh, uh, look, I, I want to push, I want to push a version 06 uh, out there. So uh, yeah, I understand, but I, I'm saying that we should uh, we should also uh, communicate uh, with him to to see that he gets what we are trying to uh, to do right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think yeah. he's based somewhere in Europe, uh, maybe Eastern Europe, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we we can ping him later and see that. Uh, I, mean, he I can add all of these guys to our uh, the separate Telegram group and then set up a doodle and work out what is uh, probably the best time uh, for everyone. Yeah, it's probably good that uh, we that we start to do it that we actually get something done in the next few weeks in terms of the uh, the peer to peer network at least in our reference implementation. Then then I expect other bundle teams to also add something. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that's uh, as we said uh, in the beginning when Yoav wasn't here. That's something that we want to, uh, to really push the, the next few weeks, and um, it it will be good to to actually have the other teams uh, that are writing bundlers also be aware of what we're doing. So uh, we'll we'll try to ping them later. Yeah. Okay, that's so, good. Yoav, do you want uh, to add? Uh, yeah, sorry. No. Yeah, I, I had nothing else on my agenda. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Uh, no. No, I think we are uh, we're good. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, so uh, the actions then, uh, Shahaf, you'd go ahead and make the change to the uh, spec for uh, that uh, particular endpoint. And uh, I'll keep you all posted on how our progress uh, goes. Hopefully, we should have something to uh, on the gossip sub and other uh, things, and we'll uh, announce in the channel as soon as it's ready.
Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you all. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.